Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching the Raiders Board. If you want to get your questions here featured, all you got to do, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. That way you know when I go live every single Tuesday. And yes, uh, this is recorded on Tuesday. So if anything crazy happens, don't yell at me. First one coming up here is from LC Raider, and it's a super chat. Is it unfair of me to expect a lot more out of Zay Jones? I was really excited when we traded for him, but he's been a little bit of a letdown. He has been a letdown, and... I was actually expecting a little bit more out of Zay as well. When you go look at some of Zay's college production, I mean, this guy had 157 catches his final year at East Carolina. Mike Mayock was really, really excited about him, which is one of the reasons why I think he's also on the field as much as he is. But Zay Jones is a good player, but he's not a game breaker. He's not somebody who should be on the field as much as he is. I really think that he's on the field because he's conditioned super well, and he can play a little bit of a decoy role, but... Uh, is it unfair for you to expect a lot out of Zay Jones? No, because most Raider fans expect a lot out of all their players. Anthony Morales, Carr, not money hungry. He already said this before. He just wants to win. You're right. The other issue is this, though. He's got an agent, and agents are money hungry. And if an agent's out there like, wait a minute, Carr, you can get $30 million if you hit the open market. But if Carr's like, you know what, man, I don't care about money. I just want to stay with the Raiders. He might actually lose his agent. I mean, that's the, ab the absolute truth. So we'll see what ends up happening. But I get that that's what Carr is saying. But I also don't know if I 100% believe him because NFL players say that all the time. All I care about is winning. And then they end up going, signing a fat deal. And, you know, it, it's just the way it works, man. Let's go to Jack 4D65. If the Raiders don't get Devontae Adams, would you rather target A-Rob or Chris Godwin? Hell of a question. Um... Obviously, Devontae Adams is the top receiver that I want in free agency. He's also going to be the most expensive. Allen Robinson, to me, is more talented than Chris Godwin. I love Godwin. I, obviously, I've been following Godwin for a long time at, back in his days at Penn State. But the most talented receiver is A-Rob. And I actually think one of the most underutilized players in the NFL is Allen Robinson in Chicago. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say Robinson. Now, if the Raiders go ahead and they get somebody like A-Rob in the offseason, cool part about this show, it's easy to make videos during the regular season. The channels that separate themselves are channels that provide content, free videos in the off season. And I'm gonna give you guys a free video every single day for literally the entire year. So hit the big red button that says subscribe and turn on your notifications. If you don't know how to turn on your notifications, there's a bell underneath the video. Click that and to make sure that you get every video to pop up on your home screen, go to the settings app on your phone, scroll down and tap YouTube, Tap notifications and then turn on allow notifications. That way, if you get a booty call from me, a.k.a. the Raiders Report, it pops up on your home screen. So seriously, turn on those noties. And to the people who I know are part of the noty gang, I want to go ahead and give you guys a shout out here. So here are the people that have commented first on my last five videos. Shout out to Carly's Kruger. It's Shimmy with an X. Jared Johnson. Martin with a lot of letters. And then Eduardo our CO, hopefully I pronounced that right. Shout out to y'all. Make sure you turn on those noties for a few for a chance to be on the Raiders report in an upcoming video. Let's go to one of my most loyal watchers here, Jack Bishop. If you can get Carr on a $27 million extension for two years, do you do it? I mean, he wants to be a Raider. You're right. He does want to be a Raider. But I'm in the area where I would rather have DC play out his $19.9 million deal. And then you see what happens from there on out. Because... I love Carr. He's a good quarterback. It's just he needs to be better at the end of the season, and he absolutely needs to be better in the red zone. Is he a top 10 quarterback? I'm not 100% sure. What I do know is this. When Carr has to really carry a team, he's not able to do it. And the more money you pay him, the less money you're able to give the rest of your roster. You're going to extend Max Crosby. You have a lot of other big-time contracts coming up here around some other key players. I like Carr. But if you want to keep him, I really think it's going to cost at least 27. I really think it's going to cost at least 30 mil. Let's go to Don't Worry. I take Wilson over Carr. He's the best of both worlds. He can run like Mariota and pass like DC. Russell Wilson is a better quarterback than Carr. But again, you're going to have to give up a lot of draft capital, probably two, three first round picks, and you're going to have to pay him a lot of money. So that's also it definitely deserves to go into the equation. Let's go to, oh, dude. My buddy, uh, he was he showed me this video, oh, shit, probably like five, six years ago, and he always would wear white vans, and I never understood why. He'd be like, damn, Daniel. So, love the YouTube name. If offensive guard is one of our biggest needs, who is the top guard in free agency next year? 
Hell of a question. The top offensive guard, I would say, is Brandon Scherf. He is an absolute dog and a player that I talked about a whole bunch this past offseason. So if you could tell me, hey, man, I can get any offensive guard in the league, it's Brandon Scherf. And not that it's not necessarily close, but it's Scherf. The next guy I would probably bring up is Andrew Norwell, though Scherf is a little bit younger. Better run blocker, though. So when you think about some of the biggest offensive needs, off-season needs, excuse me, for the Raiders, here are the three biggest ones that come to my mind. Offensive tackle, I mean right tackle. Offensive guard and then wide receiver. What do you guys think, though, is the biggest need out of these three for the Raiders? Offensive tackle, right tackle, offensive guard, or wide receiver? Let me know down in the comments. Let's go to one of our other most loyal watchers, Zornell Malo. Much love to you, brother. You have to pay going rate for a quarterback or try to rookie on a cheap deal. I think you're just making a statement, which you're right. A lot of the good NFL teams, though, think about it, minus what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did last season, but the Buffalo Bills were an upcoming team. Why? Josh Allen, great quarterback, cheap contract. The Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, great quarterback, cheap contract. Justin Herbert, great quarterback, cheap contract. Patrick Mahomes, great quarterback, cheap contract. You're starting to see a lot of these teams that are really going in the right direction. They hit on the young quarterback, and then they can use all that money to really build around that guy which is where I think the NFL is starting to go, and it wouldn't surprise me if the Raiders ended up drafting a quarterback this year to learn behind D.C. Let's go to Iran. Who would you replace Incognito with next season? I mean, if you could tell me I can get almost any left guard, John Simpson is probably going to be in the equation. Andrew Norwell's a hell of a left guard. Scherf, though, is a right guard, so maybe you want to kick Alex Leatherwood actually over to left guard, which he 100% can do. It's going to come down to doing a bunch of different things, but also you could see the Raiders potentially draft somebody. If it was up to me, though, man, the the right tackle from Northern Iowa, who I just saw in uh, Dane Brugler, who I love his draft content, uh, the Northern Iowa, he's like 6'7". He's a really, really big right tackle. Uh, what's his name? Penning? Um, he's, he's an absolute dog. I, I know he's from Northern. Trevor Penning. So he's an absolute dog. I would say right tackle is a big knee, but in terms of left guard, Norwell is going to be an option of free agency. There's going to be some draft picks as well. But guess what? We're going to be doing a lot of free agency, a lot of draft talk the entire offseason, so make sure you subscribe. Now, if anybody out there needs some awesome holiday gift ideas, we're going to continue to push this because it's been selling well. Chatsports.com slash Raider Sale. Whether you need a sweatshirt, whether you need an ugly Christmas sweater, hat, jersey, uh, shoes, there's like shot glasses, beer mugs. If you need Raider stuff, and you're looking for it on sale, go to chatsports.com slash Raidersale. There is hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of different things that you can get. But be aware, and when it's shown here on the Raiders Report, it does sell very quickly. So that link, chatsports.com slash Raidersale, that's going to be available for you guys in the live chat, in the comments, and in the description of this video, so you have no excuses. If you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas, it's on you. Send that link to a friend. If, if you're like, hey... Like me, I never know what to get my dad. I can send my dad this link. That way he knows what I want for Christmas. Let's go to Rob Cloyd. Like, 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 subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You know what, Rob? I'm totally with you, man. Shout out to you. Subscribe and like this video right now. The greatness of the Raiders. Keep Basaccia and let him pick his own staff. Unfortunately, I would be very shocked to see if that happens. They're going to get rid of Basaccia more than likely, that which also means Greg Olson. He's probably going to be on the way out. You could actually also see Tom Cable getting left out, and also that probably means Gus Bradley, unfortunately. And I actually also saw some people before the live show started just promote Gus Bradley. It's not going to happen, guys. You're going to see the Raiders bring in a new head coach. Let's go to Franco Romano. Birthday shout-out to my Niner friend, Arthur. Can you give him a loud Raider Nation? Well, only because you send in a super chat, I'll say Raider Nation, happy birthday. But a Niner friend, I think you need new friends, Franco, and he needs a new football team. Come on over to the dark side. I don't mind. Let's go to Steven Para. Just win, baby. FKC, FAB, FAB. Only the real ones know what we're talking about right here. Steven, appreciate you. How long have you been sub for? Because we're creeping on 98,000 subs, and I would love to be able to hit 98K before our next watch party. Getting really close to my Max Crosby number. Let's go to Valerie Lopez. What do you think the final record will be? Well, I predicted 10 and seven, and the Raiders coin predicted 10 and seven. So, 10 and seven. 
So guys, I don't know about y'all, but I got a freaking hell of a sweet tooth. And every single year in my family, we do this thing where it's called cookies and alcohol. We show up really, really early in the morning, like 9 a.m. We start drinking. We start making cookies. We start preparing for the, the basically Christmas and all the games that we play on Christmas Day. So my aunt was like, hey, guys, what kind of cookies should we make? And I was like, you know what? I'll ask the nation. My personal favorite's a little bit old school, but I'm, I'm a chocolate chip cookie fiend. I also love the, uh, the peanut butter cookies. I have like the peanut butter chocolate or what is it? Peanut butter cup right in the middle. Sorry, Sam, you can't eat those. He's deathly allergic to peanuts. But what's your guys' favorite cookie? Let me know down in the comments your favorite Christmas cookie. But I'm, uh, I'm an OG type of guy. Give me that chocolate chip. Let's go to Untouchable Raider 1960. Mitchell. I don't think we're back until we stay playing how we did versus Dallas and win games. Anyway, what teams would you trade Carr to? The Saints make sense because of Dennis Allen. Well, the other issue is if Carr doesn't want to play for anybody else, you can't really trade him, right? I mean, I actually think that really hurts Carr's overall trade value because he's literally said he doesn't want to play for anybody else besides the Raiders. So if I'm an NFL team, I'm like, if you don't want to play for me, why would I give up a lot of draft capital? So I do think that hurts... Um, the Raiders' ability to be able to trade Carr. But if you were to ask me which teams I think are going to be looking for a quarterback next year, if you want me to say the Green Bay Packers, because if I was Green Bay, I would trade for Derek Carr. That way you have a chance to keep Devontae Adams, but I don't really want that to happen because I want Adams in silver and black. Let's go to LS4 Rick. What up, brother? Move Abram to linebacker. I, I've long time said that I think Jonathan Abram is actually a little bit more of a linebacker than a safety. He actually would remind me a lot of Devin Bush for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Undersized linebacker, but can move sideline to sideline. That way he doesn't really need to guard or cover all that much. But the only way you do that is if Denzel Perriman doesn't come back, if K.J. Wright doesn't come back, if Corey Littleton, for whatever reason, his contract gets screwed up. But Littleton will be back. You're hoping that Nicholas Morrow can come back when he's 100% healthy, but if Jonathan Abram wants to stick around on the Raiders, I could actually see them potentially moving him to linebacker. All right, big time uh, Super Chat coming in, which we'll get to here. And there's a really appreciate it. Rudiguff Productions, $25. So it's a little bit of a longer one. Give me a sec. We've got a really good quarterback. When you try and do too much, you can end up in a worse state than where we are now. It's not like there are great quarterbacks sitting around waiting to get picked up. Fix the O-line first. You do have to fix the offensive line, and I agree. Carr is a good quarterback, and that's what's difficult because Carr's really good. It's hard to be able to find somebody an upgrade, but sometimes you got to roll the dice a little bit. I mean, Alex Smith and Derek Carr, to me, are the exact same quarterback. They're a little bit of a game manager. Now, DC is a lot better of a terms of being able to throw the ball down the field, and when he's in the right situation, he can be really good. But the Chiefs took a risk. They went for Patrick Mahomes. They went for the home run, and... If you want to take down Mahomes, if you want to take down Justin Herbert, I really truly believe sooner or later you're going to have to be able to go ahead and bring in that new quarterback, save some money, take that money that you would have paid D.C., and invest it into the defense, invest it in the offensive line, invest it in some players around them. That's what you got to do. Let's go to Keydrail Riggins. Do you think we need to improve on the offensive line? Absolutely you do. Andre James has played a lot better. Shout out to him. Colt Miller has been playing at a top 10 tackle level. Brandon Parker sucks, no doubt about it. He's one of the worst tackles in all football. That's where you need to improve upon. Uh, Alex Lillard has been playing a lot better at right guard. John Simpson's been up and down, but I would say you got to you got to upgrade at one of your guard positions, whether that's left guard or right guard, and then you just kick Alex Lillard to the other side and right tackle. Those right now are your biggest needs. I will say I'm sorry to Andre James because he has been playing a lot better, but there's still opportunities to improve at the center position. Now, y'all, if I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry. Again, we get a lot of questions during these live shows. Appreciate the 950 people who are still watching us live. As always, please hit me up. Instagram, at MitchellRens365. If you don't have an Instagram, make one because it's by far the easiest way to get in contact with me. Let's go to Dan Aswin. Who do you think is the most likely to be head coach next season? Who do you think is the most likely to be head coach next season? All right, so you got it in there twice. I would say if I were to put my money down I'm just going to go with the guy that I want that's Brian Dable simply because Nick Saban he's worked underneath Bill Belichick if Mark Davis was smart he would be the guy that you'd go out and put all your chips on the table for Brian Dable could also see Joe Brady being out there Kellen Moore would be another option no doubt about it especially because Kellen Moore has worked with Rich Bisaccia and if the Raiders are like you know what Rich, we love what you're doing. We'd love to stay, have you here as your uh, special teams coordinator. 
who's somebody you would recommend. I could really see Basaccia recommending Kellen Moore. Let's go to Christopher McGuire with NASA injury. Do we see Malcolm Coons? I don't freaking know, man. I said two weeks ago I want to see more of Malcolm out there on the field simply because you want to be able to figure out if he was a good pick or not, right? Because I want to know if Mike Mayock's job's safe. The fact that he hasn't been out there on the field is really scares the hell out of me. They were like, holy shit, we're going to go ahead and waste another third-round pick. But uh, we'll, we'll see what exactly we have out of Malcolm Coons if he's ever going to play this season. Let's go to Tyler Otto. What will Mad Max contract knee, or next contract look like? So I've actually given my two cents on this before. I believe Crosby is going to be in the contract extension range of at least $18 million. If it was a guaranteed lock him in, I would say four years, probably $20 million a year. Because here's the issue. If you let Crosby finish out his contract with the Raiders and you let him hit the free agent market, that dude's going to get 23 24 probably even $25 million a year. Lock him in like you did with Waller. Players are a little bit more willing then to take less money. I've talked to Crosby before. Crosby has literally told me that he wants to be a Raider for life. It's why he got it tattooed on him. It was a team that gave him a chance. But, yeah, I'm sitting here saying $18 million at least. I think it's going to be around $20 million, though, for four years. Let's go to Madman Raider. What up, brother? Keep cars, sign Adams, draft a QB in the later rounds to learn behind DC. This is the route I would go, and I don't know when you say later rounds what exactly you mean, but I'm okay taking quarterback in the second round, quarterback in the third round, because there's actually some guys who, like Malik Willis, I could see Malik Willis going in the second round and would love for him to learn behind DC, but I'm with you. Keep DC, let him play out his year, and if you want to draft a QB behind him, that's the route you go. Let's go to Phil. Should we draft the Georgia defensive tackle and fix the O-line with free agents? There, I really actually like the Georgia defensive tackle, and for whatever reason, his name. Say it again. Jordan Davis. Uh, I've been watching a lot of tape on him recently. My draft coverage will start to improve the more and more we get closer to the end of the year. But with the amount of talented free agents out there on the offensive line, sure. But there's also a ton of really talented offensive linemen in the draft as well. So it's going to depend where we finish the season. But when the season is ended, don't worry. We'll have plenty, and I mean plenty, of draft coverage here on the Raiders Report.